Hello, welcome back. It is the 1878 FM podcast with myself, Dave, and Sam. No Baz. Jet setting again. Every opportunity he gets, boys, he's just he's out the door. He just like, you know, he's gone Friday to Monday. Doesn't even probably doesn't even know where his kids are. He's just gone. Where's he gone? He's gone to Wales. Okay. He's the natural successor to Judith Chalmers at this point, isn't he? It isn't hasn't that sh- I mean quite literally hasn't that ship sailed like isn't that isn't that wasn't that like a nineties thing? Yeah, I'm I'm I need to update all my uh, like pop culture references. I'm I'm just waiting for the next cookie to where I'm I'm stuck in 1987. I also feel like a joke about. I was, <laughs> I was just gonna say I think like he's the natural successor also to Wogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this this Very got so. this got me thinking. We is there somewhere. Is there somewhere you 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 gents go quite frequently? You know, is there a place or you went as a kid that you still go? Is there st- you know, or or is there like you know when you get an opportunity to go on a break, do you, do, you, do you change it up or are you drawn back to the same places? Because I I do think this is something as we get older we get very very comfortable with certain places mm. and just keep going back and it's a big wide world out there, but we're just drawn back to somewhere maybe you know. Like Pontons down the road or something. So is there anywhere you you boys go to? We we've been to Butland six times with the kids. Have you? And yeah, six times. We went once and we were a little bit stiffy, going, "Oh, it'll be Butland." Mm-hmm. I'm sure the kids will love it. And we got there and it was boss. It was like yeah, Glasgow for kids. Um, Ket everywhere. It was amazing. And uh, <laughs> so then we went back the following year, and then we just kept going. And now we've said we're not going anymore, and the kids are really devastated. But I don't want the kids to do that thing that you just mentioned, Ped, about like just getting comfy with the same choices. Yeah, like you say, this you can go anywhere, can't you? I think fundamentally, isn't this all to do with the fact that when you get to become men of a certain age, as we all clearly are, is that well, certainly with me, I don't like change very much. Mm. And I think this boils down to what you're saying, Ped, is the fact that, yeah, it's a big wide world and we could go anywhere, you know, and, and technically we should actually use, you know, different holidays to go to different places. But often it's just easier to go back to what you know, isn't it? You know, mm. you find somewhere that you like and you think, well, it worked last year. The kids loved it or whatever it is, or my missus loved it. Why try and risk anything? And we'll just go and do the same again. I'm, I'm, I'm all over that. It, where did you go as a kid, Dave? Because obviously you were a bit, you were, you all upbring them was slightly different. Mm. So was there was there somewhere you went as a kid that was slightly unusual? Or well, the thing was when I was a kid growing up in Hong Kong. So our equivalents of going to France or Spain or Greece or something was going to places like the Philippines or Malaysia or Thailand, because it was a short, you know, yeah. a short little hop. Um, So there was a place in Malaysia that we used to go to a lot. Like, I think we probably went there something like eight holidays out of my first 11 years or something like that. And that was a classic example of we found a hotel that we liked and it just worked. And we thought, well, we could go somewhere else, but let's just go back there again. So we did. Um, But more latterly, there isn't really anywhere. I mean, I suppose the only thing now with me is that just because I'm too skint to go on a proper holiday. So I just <laughs> I just end up kind of packing the car up and I've got good friends that live down in Cornwall near Falmouth and it's just an easy little yeah. bolt away from me. You know, I know I can go down there. I've always got my spare room and then, you know, and that's that does me. So I suppose that's the nearest to it at the minute, but it's not so much because it's somewhere that works. It's, it's just like an easy little bolt away, you know. Mm. Cornwall's gorgeous though, isn't yeah. it? Cornwall's beautiful. Cool. If it was closer to Liverpool, I'd be there all the time. Yeah. And it's funny, though, because we all like to think of ourselves as these... I think most people, if if you asked them, would say, oh, I'm yeah, I'm very open-minded. Mm. But every time I go into the toilet, I use the same urinal. And I think a lot of us do. Because we're just, we're just creatures of habits, aren't we? Sam, Where do you go, Ped? Well, I'll, I'll come on to that now. But I'm, I'm just intrigued by you saying you don't want to get your kids comfortable. And I've got visions of taking your kids to a gulag or something. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> no. Funny like, you should say that because <laughs> there was a group on deal. I've just booked them in for half term. Wit, half term. Wit and whipped. No, do you know what? This this summer, this summer, I've had a real crisis that my kids are far too like spoiled. Like, yeah. Just spoiled. I think all, a, a lot of kids are nowadays. Mm. But I, and you should never compare today with what your childhood. Mm. But I'm going. We never had this. We never had trampoline parks. We never had yeah. food. You know what I mean? And, and they get all this stuff. <laughs> shoes. <laughs> shoes that match the same size. So you're not walking around in circles. That are, that are different feet. 
She, you know, we used to steal from the bowling alley or a bouncy castle on a good day. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I'm going like the very tail end of the summer holidays. I was like, right, they've had it too good for too long mm. now. So I'm going to just take them some really crap places oh, and, and just force them to stay in and try and like just, yeah, knock them down a peg or two. Yeah. I don't think this is good parenting. No, but you know what though? I do think it's good pain, and not, not in the extreme way. But I often hear when I, mean, I I I obviously can't talk because I am not a parent, which is probably for the best for everybody. But I I often hear when people talk about like the gen, the kid kids now, and they go, "Well, they've got a too easier," and I'm just like, "Yeah." Because people worked really hard. Like, our parents probably worked really hard to make our lives as comfortable. And Sam and Dave, you've probably worked really hard to make your kids' lives really Mm. comfortable. And I'm sure Baz is the same. And when people go, oh, these kids have got it too easy and they've got this and they've got that, it's like, yeah, that's your fault for making them the way they are. So I don't think it is the worst thing that, like... That like their lives are made a little bit tougher and and, and stuff. I think that's a really good thing at times. You're right, though, aren't you, in terms of, like, you know, the difference between, you know, when we were kids and our kids now is probably no more extreme than it was from, as you say, our parents to us. Yeah. You know, so when you look at, you know, exactly the same argument could be had in the 80s or something where you kind of go, well, we never had an Atari yeah. and we never had a soda stream <laughs> and we never had, do you know what I mean, all these things which are now sort of retro cool. Um, but, but, and I think I think it probably happens generation on generation, yeah. doesn't it? You just but but you look back and you think, well, like you know, people go, oh, I never had a big flat screen telly, but you probably might have had the best telly at the time. It just yeah. didn't happen to be yeah, flat yeah. screen. You yeah. know, I I grew up with having like the Super Nintendo the day, like you know, God, the Christmas it come out, and that was the best thing about then. So of course, my mum and dad worked out, and they bought me a telly to go with it because they wanted mm. me to play in it in me in my room rather than playing it downstairs because they couldn't bear the sight, you know, the sight of me and not. Nothing's changed. Um, you know, <laughs> if I'm ever on BBC Northwest, my dad's putting regr- Granada reports on the minute I, I appear on it, you know what I mean? So he doesn't have to see me face. But it's going back to what you said there. It's funny because, um, Sam, because to my, when, we, when we were kids, I was dragged around, like, places in North Wales and places in Cornwall and places in South Wales, Tenby and, and like, you know, all places in Cornwall and Devon, and I hated it. And yet now as an adult, I find myself going on to these places to walk around, like with the dog and with me missus to like play, you know, North Wales to uh, Abbasock to, to Conway, place I hate us as a kid, and yet I'm drawn back to them now. It's mad, and and that all like that all goes from again, me mum and dad doing the best they could and taking us on holidays and making sure we did have holidays it, before we could maybe afford to go or it was cheap enough to go to to Spain or or Tenerife or wherever. And it's so weird the way we go, we end up going back to those places. But I just I remember I don't know whether Sam this was part of your upbringing. But when I was a kid, my uh, nan would book Butlins every year. And when I say my nan, there's an idea of like this, you know, little old woman and stuff. My nan, there was like a million grandkids in her house. So I grew up in a massive family. And what basically would happen is she would book a chalet in Butlins. She'd go down. And we'd go down in a big van that had no windows in it. So, number one, you'd leave from Liverpool and go all the way to Fafeli in a van without any windows. So, you can imagine that journey is like... Mm. You just you haven't got it. You've got no sight or sound of anything. You haven't got a clue. Did you feel like you've been kidnapped. Yeah, or, or, it's, it's almost like it's almost like it's like, that, that's how they transport hostages, isn't it? They, you know? like, so that you have no con. In fact, normally they blindfold you as well in the films, don't they? And then they stick you in the boot, and then it means that you've actually got no idea where you've gone. Dave, you're counting the bumps in the road so you know where you're on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> you're going on. Yeah, we're right near that. I know how far we are now. And then basically we just they just go to Perfelli Butlins. And and they'd be like, yeah, we've booked a chalet. There'll be a couple of people in the front. Me nan's there. And the next minute, this back door would open and all the Mac mm. and kids would pour out. And honest to God, <laughs> Butlins, was, there's a reason why it's not Butlins anymore. My my cousins just, like, pillaged the place. Oh, my God. And I hated it. I absolutely, I like, I remember, like, two or three times going and, like, having to ring me dad going, please come and get me. This is hell on earth. I'm surrounded by, like, other people who are quite who are similar to me and I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> and it, like, so like that. But it's just weird that we just fall back into the same traps of what what we did as a kid. And Dave, going back to what you said, it's so expensive to go abroad now, even if you just, 
you know, remember, remember, I mean, remember the golden era of when you could just easy jet, like any easy jet. Now it's like four hundred quid. I know, I know. It's horrible. And that's, the, that's and that's the thing, you know. And also, it's, you know, I've now gone beyond. I think you, when you're a certain, or rather, when you've got kids of a certain age, and yeah. you'll probably testify th- to this, Sam. It almost feels like it's one of your responsibilities as a parent to ensure that, to the best of your financial ability you're taking them away on a holiday. Do you know what I mean? Almost like you feel a yeah. bit mean if you don't take your kids away. But then yeah. when yeah. when they when they grow up, like my daughter's now 17, the idea of her going on holiday with me, I mean, she could. there's nothing that she would probably rather do less. <laughs> you know, it's just not of interest. Therefore, my responsibility as her dad to sort of save up and maybe take her to whatever, to Tenerife for a week in the summer or take her to Greece is sort of off my list now, which is why I just tend to do my own thing because there's only one person I really have to look after and, and that's me, you know, and, and as long as she... In fact, funny enough, she's actually just been away on holiday, her first ever holiday on her own, if you like, so with a couple of friends. And, um, yeah, it cost me 200 quid for her to go on holiday, but I haven't bloody been anywhere. <laughs> That's, but, that, you know, that's 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 what you do. That's that's parenting, isn't it? You but know. For, the, the, irony, yeah. the irony is, sorry, Sam. The irony is just quickly is, I tend to go on a lot of holidays now for me dog, so yeah. that's even funnier. <laughs> that's even funnier. It's like we well, yeah. we've got to go to Wales because Loki's got to have a holiday. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, okay. And I'm like, at first it was like what, but now I'm just like, yeah, of course he does. Never mind, does going abroad anyway. He's got to have a. We've got to go to Anglesey for Loki for a week because he's got to have a holiday. Because clearly, all that lying around in our house and in the sun in the backyard, and obviously, it takes a toll. Yeah. So he's got to have a holiday. So I wonder. I wonder if dogs are the same as like children though, where they're looking at the owners going, "Oh, why have you brought me here again? <laughs> She's dead boring." <laughs> I got the shit last time I was here. Yeah, I had a plastic bag and I had to pull out the other end. It was horrendous. <laughs> Because it's like, it's like when I took when I took my sister my my dog niece because I had her on loan so I took her down to Cornwall you know but um, with a view to a permanent well exactly it was a loan deal <laughs> with an option to purchase at the end of the season but I'm I'm yet to I'm yet to actually press go on that mm. <laughs> I I just I take my kids to all the things you were talking about Ped like you know you you take them up hills like through fields into mm. forests because they need nature and I'm I'm. I'm up constantly thinking, they've, they've had too long on the screens. They need some nature yeah. to balance it out. And I take them to, like, we went up Movama. We get to the top of Movama, and I'm dead proud of the two of them. We've got to the top with minimal moaning. And we've got to the top of Movama, and we can see this amazing view. And one of my lads just starts telling me about Minecraft and this, this village he's built on Minecraft. And it's got nothing to do with where we are. And I'm yeah. like, this is ridiculous. But then I remember just doing the same thing. When I was eight, nine, Talking about me Commodore 64 games and yeah. walking around Crete with my mum and dad. So <laughs> kids just want what they want, don't they? But it's our job to just drag them to nature. Yeah, Dra- absolutely. Just drag them. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure it's just dragging kids anywhere that they don't want to be. I think should mm. be a sport, an Olympic sport. It's that whole. It's that whole fresh air thing, though, isn't mm. it? As you say, because you sort of feel that you need to do something healthy with them, and take them yeah. out. Um, you know, but and, and and again, then the other thing as well that always amuses me is the fact that when we were kids and we would get told that we were sort of wasting our time for just sitting there watching telly, right? You know, get out, do something, mm. you know, because you're just sitting there watching the box. Yet the irony now is the fact that we now encourage children to come and watch the box <laughs> with us because that is almost deemed to be a social activity. Yeah. Because then it's then it's four or five or however many in your family all enjoying the same screen as opposed to sitting there in the lounge <laughs> all on their own sort of things. It's you know, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's so it's crazy. Like, come yeah. and watch, come and watch whatever Saturday night takeaway or whatever it might be, because this can be a shared experience. And it's on live. So other people yeah. on the street might be watching yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, you can my, my, yeah, absolutely. Which, which, which means I, you can tweet about it together. Yeah. yeah. Because, <laughs> Cause I tell me kids when I was a lad, it was like, get outside, go and play outside. Now I say to me kids, don't play outside. Yeah, it's yeah. dangerous. Go yeah. on your iPads where grown men pretend to be little girls <laughs> and you can speak <laughs> to anyone. Cause that's <laughs> safe, isn't it? Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? It's mad. What I would say is though, the, the, the model of the story is I remember when I was, I think I was 22, my mum and dad paid for me to go to Florida and um, they said we couldn't afford ever as a kid. For when you were a kid to go to Florida, mm. so so when I got to twenty two and I actually had some money and a job, they paid me. So the mo- it's, you're playing the long game. 
You're playing the long yeah. game. Uh, you know, any uh, message to any kids out there who haven't had the four teams be taken to Florida is, is uh, you know, keep bugging your parents. It doesn't matter how old they are. Just keep bugging them. And and one day they will die and you'll get the house. So just, <laughs> just stay in the good books for as long as you can. Persistence, isn't it? <laughs> Marginal gains. You just yeah. got to keep pecking away. Pecking away. Sam, go on. You said you had a story. I want to know what your story is. It's not a story, it's a topic. Okay. Topic okay. for us. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, that's topic. fine, yeah. This is the topic. If what we know as weapons today did not exist and law and order broke down, what non-weapon would you use to defend your house and family? <laughs> uh, that's a tough one. Mm. I've I mean, got my answer, if you want go my on. answer. That, yeah, I'd like your answer yeah, first. Because yeah. I've, I've thought about this for about two weeks now, so... I've, first of all, it's around the house with Lego. Yeah. yeah. And there was yeah. like a little bit of a... Booby moat. trap. Yeah, Booby yeah, trap, yeah. yeah. Then I'd have a cheese grater in one hand. I'd have a sex toy in the other. I'd have a colander on my head. So you got sex I'd toys have... in both hands? I'd, I'd... <laughs> <laughs> and on your head. And on me. <laughs> Down the front of my T-shirt, I'd have a couple of bacon trays. And then I'd have a Bluetooth speaker attached to each shin playing acdc okay. and also help me to kick people you know for you know extra yeah. extra power uh-huh. and then there's a big trampoline in our garden that the kids haven't used since about 2017 but won't let me throw out i'd use that to bounce over the house okay uh, at the at the attack as like a like a luchador wrestler and it'd be like home alone on on crack yeah <laughs> you see that's more detailed than i thought because yeah. i when when you were talking about what thing would you use as a weapon then I was just instantly drawn to, I don't know, I'd get like a shovel or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> or, or like a garden. I was, I was thinking garden garden tools. Yeah. That was, what, that was what was in my head. Something that's in, you know, that, that's used in the garden. Shovel probably being the best yeah. thing because that's just a big bang, you know, yeah. a big kind of lump thing. But you've gone a different direction in terms of actually using other things. It's, it's, well, they, they, rather than weapons, they're more protection devices that you've gone for, aren't they? With the baking yeah. tray is a bit like a stab vest, isn't it, effectively? Maybe I've you gone know? too defensive. I've you've gone not, very I've, defensive. You, you know, you're not, Dyche. You're not gone, outgoing. You know, you know, you've, yeah. you've not taken the Duncan Ferguson approach no. to break no. into here. No. You know, because he was a lot more, you know, direct. Proactive. Pro- yeah. Yeah. Proactive is the word. Yeah, yeah. I, got I'm the gonna, job done. I'm going to see your Lego. I'm going to raise it to um, some plugs because I, oh, I Lego standing, standing on a plug is 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 honestly they, they should mm. just forget mm. about forget about selling you know all kinds of guided missiles to you know these dodgy countries. Send them plugs because yeah. there's no one get coming into you if you line the you know the 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 border with all of these plugs we'd live in a much safer world no one's getting into your country you know no one <laughs> just get over and cover it in plugs number one it mm. would solve you know a big it solved the economy in this country for those shops who are struggling at the moment just sell plugs and no one's getting into your country if you if you've got loads of plugs on the on the on the borders and when he says plugs, Sam, he's talking about like electrical plugs, mm. not the sort of toys that you were talking about having in your hands before. <laughs> that's a different thing, you know? What? You don't want another one of those option. on your borders. Another. <laughs> <laughs> but another option, Dave, to put people off, or at least confuse them as they arrive on the shores, go, what's that? Is that the mm. White Cliffs of Dover? Is that what Dame Vera Lim was singing about? And there's just all these like sort of wobbly. I don't know. I don't know what consistency these things that you're If she about sung about are. the white plugs of Dover, that would have been a completely different song. Or the butt plugs of Dover. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh that's, that's it. That feels like a question that maybe should have been put in the group chat before. And for once we might, have, <laughs> we should maybe have had a meeting about it. Cause you went so in depth. I was thinking, oh well, I put God. it in the group chat about three weeks ago. So I'll have three weeks to oh, think we about don't this. Read, we don't read. I know no one reads it. I, I, mean, I should have put it we in just, again. We, we don't do that sort of I've thing. I've been thinking about it. In fact, another five, if we were to start I mean, five Andy minutes, Bush reads it. I would be wearing Andy, Andy Bush, Bush reads, reads it. it. Yeah, he's, I... not, he's, he's not been on the podcast, no, no. you know, for the last three years. You only have to you only have to listen to his show the next day to know that easily. easily. <laughs> 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 so you know, say to oh lads, I've got a great idea today. Me and the other fella, Richie, we're gonna do a show on how would you defend yourself? Plugs, plugs, Andy, <laughs> plugs, wouldn't that be great, eh? In our little village where we all live, isn't that weird? Sorry. Um 
My, hey, that could be it, Dave. We could all go on holiday to where all the people from Absolute Radio live. Yes, we could. Oh. We could. I mean, I mean, I could, I could tell you now where they all live, but I, that might be that might be against their own privacy mm. rules. It's Leon C. Just to give oh, it away. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's Leon C. <laughs> it's Leon C. They all that's, live that's there. It. It's they like one do. street, like a soap opera. Yeah, and they all, and just, they like, all like live Stella in Leon Street. C. Yeah, it's near South End. Because, and there's because a... then, because it's sort of been dubbed absolutely as in L E I G H at the end. So. Yeah, and there's a big, there's there's a big inflatable white ball that just goes on its own that says on it non re, no repeat workday or something mm, on the side of it. Absolutely and guaranteed. It just, yeah, it just follows people about, and people are shouting, "I'm not a number." But if I was, I'd be number one. Um, and for those that don't listen to Absolute Radio regularly <laughs> like what we do, then this will mean nothing to you whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> what a, what a great... What, yeah, I was always please. disappointed with Absolute 90s when it went to the news. You got the news from today. <laughs> yeah. I thought I wanted to get news from, like, especially during COVID. I was like, give me yeah. give me the news from a, a happier year, like mm. 1997, mm. changing governments. Everyone's happy. Oasis of the uh, young... Mm. We're young. Do you know but what? No, it was funny enough. I was trying to describe because obviously we've had this Oasis, um, obviously the Oasis tickets uh, situation. I was talking to Ned and Jack about it last week, and I was trying to describe why so many people of our like of our age, and obviously Dave being younger than us, it might be sure. might be a good lesson for him. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. why so many people were like a, a desperate to get tickets? Because you know that that trying to get back onto that that moment of, of the 90s and saying to him, like, Oasis were literally that moment in time for us was probably the last big thing that happened uh, prior to, obviously, social media, um, digital music coming in as well. You had to be there sort of living in the moments and everyone being in there, like, teens or 20s or seven or eight of your Dave, again, as I said. Mm. Um, it, it was such a moment in eight, time. It was like the last time like you just said, Sam, it was like the last time anyone seemed to be genuinely happy was when Britpop, <laughs> Tony Blair, before he went into other countries, and, you know, before social media, so you had to actually go out and tell people in the street or in a pub that you were happy or weren't happy, rather than it being so dependent on on, on digital content. And, and everyone's just desperate, aren't they, to get back to that time, even though at that time everyone was desperate to be older and, and, and into the future. It's yeah. ultimate nostalgia, isn't it? Yeah. Is what it is, you know, and and as you say, when you look back, and um, you know, you look back at things like 1996, for example, and obviously, you know, you had the Euros here and and whatnot, and musically things were good, and we were all of a decent age, um, and yeah, that's what the whole clamour for tickets is now amongst people who were, you know, certainly middle aged trying to retrace those heady days of their youth in the 90s, you know. Uh, and I, paying, paying whatever, 300, yeah. 400 quid for the privilege. I remember just in school, though, everyone suddenly liked music. Like, everyone. Yeah. Mm. And at the time, I think I was annoyed about it for about three weeks because I was into music already, and it was my thing. I was a bit of a geek. And it was oh, my get thing. you, and then Beethoven. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I was just, you know, I was there composing. Like, whenever I was walking home from school, just a bit yeah. of parchment. Just and, like, mad it. hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, hair. <laughs> um, I mean, mad hair. <laughs> but then everyone got into music, but that's a good thing because it yeah. just it opens people's eyes. And there was like, I remember going into sixth form and there was like a couple of guitars in the common room and people just picked them up and started playing them. And yeah, everyone would be singing. It was just, I mean, I'm sure that only happened once, but in my head, that was all the time. And it was in a film. Yeah. And, and it was in, yeah, beautiful, <laughs> like sort of hazy vision. And it, and it never happened to me. But that was one of the that was that was one of the things about Oasis as well, without sounding all you know um, sort of late show, is the fact that you know it was so accessible. Yeah, and you know, and that's part of it. Is part of it is the simplicity of it, and the fact that everybody could everybody could sing an Oasis song because it was very simple in its sort of construction, and also having nine pints beforehand didn't in any way inhibit your performance. It only made it better. Yeah. No, it was better. Yeah. Also, it feels like a time when I, f I feel like we've lived in this time now with social media that nothing seems to be. I know things are changing, but nothing seems to be changing. We have our we 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 do our things. We go on online, and some people tell the world about it. But everything just feels 
Like we were then, sorry, it felt like we were building up to that point that we were about to go on social media or something was about to happen, something. And then when that change happened and Facebook and then Twitter and everything's just felt really samey since. That's why for the last four or five years you go, oh my God, 2019 was five years ago when it just feels like it was yesterday because nothing has changed. Like everything seems the same, political, whether one, you know, on one side or another, nothing seems to change. And everything just goes on all the time. And uh, the world seems to be speeding up to the point where, like, it's September already. And you're like, where did the year go? But then it felt like, it, I don't know, it just felt like it was a little bit slower. And we were I tra- remember. Go on. I remember, like, in, say, I'm plucking two years out of thin air, but say, like, 1999, right? And I'd yeah. find an old VHS tape from 1995, say, with, like, a film I taped at Christmas on. Mm. And I put it on. And even in four years... Like the the sort of the tight, you know, like the the graphics look very sort of yeah. retro. Yeah. The adverts looked ancient. Yeah, and it was yeah. only four years. Yeah, whereas now all the graphics have been like state of the art. You can't really improve them in any way. We've got four K. It's all it's been like that for about you know five ten years now. So it, it adds to that like stasis that we're in, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels mm-hmm. like. But it's funny though, isn't it? When you look at stuff, and and again, this is you know what we all say is that trying to come to terms with the fact that two thousand and four, for example, was twenty years ago you know which is just seems ridiculous but when you look back on stuff from the early 2000s which we kind of thought was all modern and yeah. state of the art and it does look dated now oh it looks you know like, everything it... in fact do you know what even even things like when you look at things like 2007 you know you know like on facebook everyone's facebook goes back as far as yeah. 2007 and then that's it because obviously there wasn't anything before that but when you look at people's hair there was a there was a look in 2007 yeah. It was people had different hair. People wore different clothes. You know, the risk is sort of stating the obvious, but there was a sort of hairstyle in 2007. Yeah. People sort of wore it sort of longer at the sides. There's, um, you know? there's a, there's a, like a, um, if you can, you ever watch a film from probably 2000 or 1990, no, from the Matrix, right? So if you watch a film yeah. from the Matrix to when we got like smartphones, there's an era of films and they're all for there was like remember like so films that centered around young people with weird hair hacking mm. into things <laughs> and, and everyone's got like the flip phone and if you watch those films now everything before those films or the matrix is like nostalgia you can watch that and go oh that's that was of its time you can watch like whatever whether it be you know anything set in the 90s or the 80s, you know you feel part of that. And then everything afterwards, like we are saying, then feels very much the same. It's a smartphone, so it's got all the different things on it. But it was just a period between 2000 and 2007 where everything just feels like, like, how did that happen? How were we stuck for seven years in this, like, futuristic world where we hadn't quite got to where we wanted to be, but we were past the matrix where... So it was cool sunglasses, wraparound sunglasses, uh, flip phones. Everyone's got that, you know... Everyone's got a certain like haircut, like you said. Everyone's mm. wearing like crop tops, frosted tips. Yeah, the lads like it's so tips. weird, oh. and it, it stands out on its own as like this era. It's like, was I part of that? Because I don't remember being part of that. And everyone's a fucking hacker. What? What? What's going? Why was everyone a hacker? And what were they hacking into? Because you still had dial up your dickheads. <laughs> hacking into their own it took three Jeopardy. weeks just you like that i'm hacking into the cia mom get off the phone get off the phone mom it's like <laughs> he's broken his microphone now he's, he's that excited i i found something i mean this is sort of quite timely because i found something earlier this morning which was a gino Ginelli advert <laughs> from 1992 Right, <laughs> and I've stuck it on my I've stuck it on my Instagram story, um, and as I say, it's very much in keeping with this conversation because it yeah. looks so dated. I'm just yeah. going to see if I can find it here now. This is one of these. This might be an edit point actually cool. when we uh... okay. Take home a Gino Ginelli ice cream, a Piazza Italia, toffee fudge, and chocolate. Gino Ginelli, the ice cream sensation. Gino, oh Gino Ginelli. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Mint chocolate chip, tutti frutti. <laughs> it's brilliant. 1992, that was. It's only, uh, what's that, 32 years ago? There should be a channel. 32 years ago. There should be Making a channel. Salivate. 
a channel that just runs old adverts. Old oh, adverts. Forget oh, about yeah. old film. Forget about old film. What film is it? It's in Demolition Man, isn't it? Where the, in the future there's no music, so they just have the jingles because there's no music anymore. So you just have jingles. There should just be a channel that just plays 24 hours a day, old adverts. And I guarantee we'd all sit there just what? Oh, that Guinness. Mm, yeah. Look at this Guinness out there from 1995. Oh, my God. Look at it. We'd love it. It'd be amazing. Mm. Be amazing. I'm sure you've done one of those talking heads sh- they shows. Dave. Oh, I have. I've, yeah, they're, they're what we used to call uh, "I love being on the telly" yeah. programs because yeah. it was always "I love 1994," mm. "I yeah. love 2003," and basically you get paid 200 quid to sit there and pretend that you remember these things. So what they've got <laughs> is, and this is sort of ruining the whole thing mm. of telly, but I don't care. Ruining. Um, so what happens is they will have all these different events from say 2003 right and then then and then they want different people to say so they kind of go oh do you remember when this happened or do you remember when so and so fell over and you kind of go no <laughs> and then they show it you right yeah. and then and then you sort of go oh and it was so funny because he comes out and oh i was there <laughs> laughing and he had green trousers oh. on and blue shoes and like no one remembers that detail but you do because they've just mm. shown it to you on, <laughs> on, 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 on a clip just you're basically like Nobody forgets where they were the day the Chakademus and players fell down those it's, steps. Yeah. Exactly. That. Yeah. So that's that's what happens, and then you get your two hundred quid, and then you do your I love being on the telly thing, you know, with, with everybody else. Well, there was a show called there was a show, and they were still sh- showing it till recently, and it was something like, I think it was called something like I love the nineties or something. But BBC was still showing it, and when you got to the end, you realised more time had passed since it was originally on <laughs> till yeah. the till when they made it from whatever era it was on. It was mm-hmm. just like, and those people did all have frosted tips, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. and all the women looked you, like they were all saints for nowadays, can't you? I think <laughs> get a cream for that, <laughs> lads. I need to go and pick. Well, I was just gonna school. I was just gonna say it. I think I think both of you have got to the time where we're gonna have to. Me and Ned are gonna continue with some animal news, but I both not. I, I know that both of you gentlemen have to leave us because you've got really important adult kind of stuff that you need to get on with. So, well, I, it's, it's a school day, isn't it? Well, that's it. <laughs> Every day's a school day on this show, Dave. You should this know is that. Very true. And do you know what? And I even sort of half prepared a topic, but let's save that. For save next that week. for next week, Dave. It's been a pleasure as always. I will let you both go and get on with adult stuff, even though I know Dave's adult stuff is less because he's less of an adult because he's such a young man. This is very true. Of course. I'm go I'm actually going to the school to pick Dave up. <laughs> he's he's actually in school right now. He's I that am. young. Do you watch out for those <laughs> watch out for those plugs? Absolutely, and, and, and also don't get be getting picked up by by people called Sam that you don't know outside school. Okay, thank you. Bye. Ned said he had some animal news. So, well, to be honest, I think this should be a, a regular segment of the show. Animal. Well, it's only going to be like, regular if it's good. So we all like animals. And we come all on, like then what's your re- what's your animal it's news? It's not going to be boring animal news. Well, let's let's know. I want to know, know what it is then. If animals just. Looking cute eating food, you can enter the news and I think. Just, I mean, just, just, just get on with it. Just get on with it. It's there for um, you. Just get on with it. Um, these, these, these two sharks called okay. the, the common smooth hound sharks. They're, they're not the prettiest sharks. They're probably one of the ugliest. Um, so Would you say that to its face? Uh, well, no, because it would probably eat me. Okay. Although it doesn't matter because they probably realise that themselves now anyway, that they're you know one of the ugly ones because no one will sleep with them. So they found a way to sleep with themselves and have okay. their own babies. So nice. they're now just making babies for fun so but that could lead to you know sharknado it's its own shark problem because they might be overpopulating it got me thinking you know um how how does it do that um, i'm just thinking it doesn't give you that detail this but, could be a tip for yourself you know well that's that's leading into one of my problems you know they they've found a way of fertilizing their own egg without you know the sperm of a male shark isn't um, this what Seahorses already do. Um, no, the the they they you know do the thing. And Are you then, sure? Because and then like... the male carry the, okay. the baby. Okay. Um, some lizards are known to have fertilized. Well, of course, without, lizards. I mean, it always comes um, back to lizards. But you know, it's uh, it got me thinking. You know, if, if these can just just decide to do it, is there any point where you know because we're evolving all the time? You know, we're getting some people get taller and some people get smaller. Um, fashion sense changes, so you know, good looks go out of fashion. Uh, fashion, fashion, fashion sense changing isn't evolution. So, yeah, so so uh, over time, you know, we might just go. You know, I don't really feel like sleeping with people. So all those people 
that you know don't have sex and stuff because they're a bit ugly. Couldn't you know, like this the undateables? They just go, I'll just have a baby on me. Couldn't own. this lead? And that might lead to overpopulation. We're going to say, wouldn't hum- this lead humanage? to overpopulation because you're too much human? There's they reckon that they reckon that the human population can only get so will only get so high. It can't get any higher. I think it's it might be twelve billion. It might be a little bit less. I, I think we're pretty much. I think we're on there, eight now. We? No, we're not. We've still got a little bit to go. We're on eight. I think we're on eight now. But there's only so far, and that's not like. By the way, that's not like. We haven't got the resources. That's because you, we only live so long. It's only physically possible to yeah. We only live a certain amount of time. And there's so many undated. There's only so many people. Yeah, bring that. Yeah, I mean that's fine. Um, but we only we can only enter saying this could open up the door to just being like rampant, just kids everywhere, kids uh, and that and there's definitely some people who probably shouldn't have kids. And if you're on your own, that might be a stable environment for these kids as well and and i i think it's best if we let the sharks just go and do what they want to do leave them alone don't start poking and prodding them and wondering how they can do this you know i know like there is a thing where like certain animals it's like oh they can solve a cancer or whatever so they start messing with them or maybe that's just in a film i've watched but i think we just should leave these fellas alone how would you find out yourself that you can have a baby by yourself because I'm, I'm sure we've all, you know, you know, produced ourselves. Um, but getting to the point where you can produce yourself. And would that, would that baby shark or baby human, if we just decided to have our own babies mm. by ourselves, you know, if we just decided to take that option, would it would it be a, a, a clone? Because there's only one of those person genetics. So if I just decided, I fancy having my own that's baby, not a, that's would not, it be myself? That's not what cloning is. That's not how cloning works. Yeah, but if I just decided to just have a baby myself, would it just be you can't, me? Yeah, but you can't. But what I'm saying is you can't just decide you're going to have a baby Yeah, the shark, these sharks have. They've just gone. Just, well, no, they are, no, clearly I'm, haven't. I'm, a, I'm an ugly, smooth, They've clearly shark. evolved to a point where their body, their bodies through th- millions of years of evolution or thousands of years of evolution have changed because it's a, it's a must- it's an absolute must. But if you say like survival of the fittest and all that, then why would they make the sharks ugly in the first place? So the they point might where be ugly they to can't sharks, be pretty... though. They mightn't be ugly to sharks. Well, clearly they are because nobody wants to sleep with them. <coughs> they have to have their own baby. There might be. I'm there might be. There gonna... might be that many. There might be that many sharks. There might be that many, or the sharks might be dotted all over. So why why have we suddenly why is Mother Earth suddenly decided to let them have their own babies? There's not that many of them. Can't she see that? Earth these are to... these are dying out. Um, because they're ugly, so let's just let them. D- Mother let them Earth die. hasn't done anything because there's no such thing as Mother Earth. So who's decided that they should? They, be them, their own, their their physical physicology, cosmology, whatever the word is. So they've decided that they want. So they haven't decided. Every every living being will evolve to a point where it will either die out or it evolves to to do something. It will adapt to. It has to adapt be, to over the adapted. Point. Yeah, yeah. So like. One our little finger was probably wasn't always little, but the lack we use it less and yes, and your your DNA retains that that we I I don't know how it works. So if we it's don't need weird. it, like an appendix, can we just get rid of it? So can I just can I just can if I just, you want to chop your little finger? No, off No, I mean if I just want to make my own baby, can I just say oh, I don't want to have no, a little you can't, finger? No. So just I'll, I don't adapt, think that, I don't I'll think... adapt him to evolve to not have a little finger. Where are you gonna put that little finger to, so you have a baby? No, I wouldn't grow him. I wouldn't grow him one. I'd go, he doesn't need one. Like the sharks have gone, all right, I'll just make my own baby. I'll make them better looking. that's how it works. I'll make them better looking so then they can have, they can find partners and have their own relation, relationage have so these, they don't need have to these, have, have, these have sharks sex. got, have these sharks, are you saying that these sharks have got secret labs somewhere? No. It, well, how are they doing it then? Ev- evol- evolution. But how are they doing that evolution if if they, they, they take because, some... Because somebody decided, right, these sharks are going to die out. We have to change them now or they're going to die. You know, like the dinosaurs. Mm, yeah. We have to decide whether they can survive a meteorite or let them die. And they thought, oh, let them die, but we'll bring them back smaller. That wasn't, that wasn't the dinosaur's decision. That was, that definitely wasn't the da- yeah because also, they didn't have the technology also, to know that the meteorite was Also, loads of dinosaurs coming. did die out before that. that like, the... The, you should know this. You've so watched. yeah, but so why couldn't those dinosaurs make their own babies? Well, in the film they did. They said well, uh, life finds a way. Life isn't a film. 
life fans out there. I'm just saying in a film they So didn't. the sharks have found a way to have their own babies. Yeah, but other they? animals have uh, I'm pretty sure other animals have found a way to do this. Life finds a way. So that's what I'm saying. If if we keep evolving But we don't need if we to keep though, evolving eating, But our bodies won't because we don't need to. But what I, if we keep getting uglier so and, we, you, and we're like speak, speak for yourself. If we keep getting uglier and we're like, no, mm. nobody wants to sleep with each other. The world I think the world right now we're losing babies. The world right now is doing quite a good job of having babies. It's actually stopping people having babies, which should be the more of a priority. Well that's well there's a problem, isn't it? Because they're stopping people having babies together. Meanwhile, there's people just you can just have babies on their own. So we'll just make but one no one, people, no one, people any, can, anywhere well, at once. That's that. It's I quite th- hard to have a baby now. It's not. Well, it's not for them sharks, is it? They just keep making them on their own. Maybe there's they the, don't, there's your don't. problem. They're going to overpopulate the sea. They're not going to overpopulate the sea. They really? Could they just have babies whenever they want? No, they, they don't can't. have to be making date. You know, There'll something, something, stuff, something. There'll be something bigger out there which eats those sharks. But what if they soon go right? We're making all also, these babies. Also, there's a balance, and they're getting. There's a soon. balance though. There's a balance to all this that maybe they're having more sharks themselves because. We've messed up the water, and the by messing up the water, we've made those sharks uglier. So you're blaming us for? Yeah, I'm blaming us. All right, well let's just we've let's just let it coddled. carry on, and then when the blue whale, when the blue whale, pe- the, you know the the big blue whale things, they'll come across them because they live in like, you know, what if, they live in the same what area. What if like they? these sharks? Like, Hang the, on, these sharks. What if these sharks are like the first step to like Sharknado? Is like they go well number one. We give birth to ourselves, so why can't we go a bit further and give ourselves like if we're gonna give birth to ourselves, let's have lasers. So they can just like add I don't know if it, you can put lasers, but maybe why? Like, wings. They can give birth something. to themselves. Well they can probably grow legs and come on land and stuff and take over us. But if um, what I'm saying what is did in the first if place? blue whales are in are, are, you know, growing up in the same area and they're seeing these sharks having babies on their own, they're gonna go, Oh, well, I want to go with it. What are you going to do? Go to their lab and say, "Can you do one no, for me?" No, they're just you know they'll just uh, evolveinate themselves and go on start of my own babies. And then you've got a blue whale problem. And once you've got a blue whale, what do you problem, think a blue whale problem would lead to? Um, you know, less fish. No, because what, what I'm thinking, you know, if you if you have an empty cup and you've got half a glass, but you start dropping loads of big cubes the of water ice, will the go water. up so the, and that'll you know, affect our stadium the water might you know that'll affect yeah. our stadium so if there's more wet yeah but I think that would even itself out because I don't live on a coast but I was on the coast yesterday and I was thinking yeah. well, you know soon this could all be underwater and if the blue whale so, problem really but happens, the problem so. is is though if the blue whale if there's more blue whales then there'll be less fish because they'll eat them so number one that balances itself out in the water so the water wouldn't go up because there'd be less fish in there but then because there's less fish they da- die because they'd have nothing to eat. And then there'd be no fish and no whales. And then we'd have no fish. And then, so we'd have less to eat. So it would kill us as well. So well, no, because they'd... that's where we would evolve. Mate. Well, what would we evolve into? Sharks. We'd evolve into sharks. That make our own babies. To make our own babies. We don't need to eat. So it's we just a circle of life, really, it's isn't so... it? It's just a circle of I'm life. I'm going to die soon. Um, so I'll just have my own baby. And then they they they're basically a couple. So of can me. we have a baby, but the baby's a shark, but we're still humans. Um, if that's how evolution works, then yeah. I don't think it is how evolution works, but I don't think any of what you has come out of your mouth is what ev- how evolution works. Well, sharks are having their own babies now, so if 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 you know how to explain the reasoning why that is happening, do we have to explain the reason or not? Is no, it, but is it better it that means, some... it means you know anything that you can't really imagine is possible. When did you find this out? Um, in the animal in nope. some when about two weeks ago. So before two weeks ago, before you were hit by this sudden news, were you a bit like, "I'm all like, all I've got to do is stay. If I go in water, I'll just stay away from sharks. That's like a given." Are you now like? Well, no, now but... we've got two problems. Now we've got, I've got to stay away from the sharks, but also... I, I, originally, I didn't see it as a problem. I thought, oh, I might go try that shark soup now. I've always wanted to go with that. I never tried it. But I you thought... not know, think that one of the reasons why sharks are so pissed off with humans is maybe that we keep killing them and we're putting them in soup? Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking. I, why I've can't never, you stop I've never, never really been into, you know, shark soup. I think if you're going to have a fish soup, I don't think it's, a, it's not much of a, not in danger, it's not they? much of a delicacy but in St. Helens, is it? Now they can just make as many sharks as they want. I, I, whoa, whoa, they might whoa, start who's they? Sh- the sharks. They can just go So sharks are basically, are they creating an army? So I'll just have a go Are these in line soup. with the dolphins? 
Um, so no, what the if the do- shark, the, the dolphins, and get together well, with the spiders? Problem. We see as the we see as the dolphins as the good guys, and the sharks, the sharks are the bad guys. Are we going to form it? But I've always dolphins? told you the dolphins aren't the good guys. Dolphins yeah, are. But they're not going around making their own babies, are they? That we know about. See what the dolphins are doing really, what doing really well is they're keeping it all on the quiet. The sharks are shouting about fucking reproducing with each other, telling scientists. So scientists put it in magazines. The dolphins, and this is why I don't like them, is they are just like what. If you're having babies, don't tell anybody. How are we going to take over the world? Keep it on the down low. So we're putting them in aquariums and they're like, <laughs> and we're like, look at that stupid dolphin. The dolphins are like, lad, we've put that dolphin in there for you to look at because we're over there ready to take over the world with the spiders. And clearly now they've got a, 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 a shark regiment mm-hmm. as well that can reproduce itself. So when they get killed, when the great animal human war comes along, the, as quick as we're killing the sharks, they're reproducing themselves and sending out a new, a new wave. What are, you know? What are we going to do about that? Well, suppose, and they've got I, lasers. I suppose that is one thing to take from it. If when you know when Jurassic Park happens, mm. when they start making the new dinosaurs, don't take you know a genetic, you know, genage from mm. um, the, that species yeah. of shark because good... if you make a big, you know. Philosoraptor. Philosoraptor. Is that a raptor who's like really clever and has like philosophy? But he's he's like big and stuff. Mm. Uh, You know, a big Rexy, you know, machine dinosaur. Yeah. You know, tank. Um, Do you know there's a new. Don't let it have this genage from Mm, the shark. Because it, you can, it might just keep reproducing itself and then you, before you know it, we're all being eaten. Do you know there's going to be a new Jurassic Park film? Uh, I do, but apparently the ca- the cast is. Uh, well, it's got Scarlett. Yo- it's got to go ha- Scarlett Johansson in, so it's a that's a that's a winner for me. Yeah. Too. And it's going to be about basically all the dinosaurs. No, remember like last time we were like ah they're all going to be free. Yeah, yeah. Well, because like you can't just stick a dinosaur in the world and expect it. So they've all gone to the nice warm areas apparently, and um, one of the dinosaurs apparently like going back to what I said before has something in it that saves everyone from cancer. So that's basically. It's it's the going again to do the find the find the dinosaur. It's got something in its head. It's it, it, yeah. Well, I suppose this so news. Can. Hopefully, it, you know, this gives the scientists something to do because they might go. Well, you know, these sharks have just recently, mm. you know, changed their evolution. Fair play. Like, they changed. I don't know what DNA. that's got to do with Jurassic Park. So may, yeah. maybe let's let me let's give them another go. So see what, if they can cure cancer now or some anything else. Well, it, it's you know comes back round, doesn't it? Because in the original Jurassic Park. The dinosaurs could reproduce themselves, even though they, we were told they were, there was something in them that stopped it. And they said, "Life always finds they, they, a way." Ch- they changed their sex to like well, they just, fish. Yeah, they could Some just whatever. Yeah, well, it, it, I think clown it was, fish I think do it, that. I mean, clearly. Um, and it's gone full circle. If we have come back to a new Jurassic Park film where it's based off the sharks, and again, full circle, like this podcast, I think we'll leave it there because I think we've blown far too many minds today. I think far far too many minds have been blown, uh, and we'll be back next week. Baz will be here, so it'll be it'll, it'll there'll be more drab football talk and less great segments on sharks having relations with themselves and also Vera Lynn on the White Cliffs of Dover doing things with plugs that we shouldn't talk about. There we go. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Bye.